So where have all these methods gotten us? We started with a bunch of questions about how face perception works. Let's see where we've gotten. First question was a kind of mar computational theory level question about what is the nature of the problem of face, face perception. By thinking about that, without measuring any data, we just realized that actually, one, faces are really similar to each other. That's why there's ambiguity in a single dissociation prosopagnosia case. It's a different problem from recognizing classes of objects, right? Um, two, that a central challenge in face recognition and object recognition is that the same face looks many different ways as it rotates like this and as the lighting on it changes and as the hair changes and as the expression changes and as people talk and all that. So there's high variability and we want to extract the identity of that person in general, not just where the pixels are on their face right now. And so we have this big challenge in trying to solve that problem. So those are the problems that we identified. Uh, moving on to um, what we learned about the kinds of representations we extract from faces. We learned a bunch. We learned that faces are more sensitive to inversion than objects are. We learned that from behavioral studies, the face inversion effect. We learned it from lots of the other brain measurement studies that showed the same thing, some of which I talked about, some of which I didn't. They all show this effect. Um, we also learned that faces are processed in a more holistic way. And we, um, uh, we, and hopefully you guys on your quizzes, uh, wrote what that meant. Uh, there are basically two kinds of evidence, the composite effect and the part whole effect, both of which show that when you process a face, your system wants to deal with the whole face at once. It's not very good at encoding individual parts. Okay? Um, and we also learned that for unfamiliar faces, people are pretty bad at dealing with this invariance problem, at appreciating the sameness um, of the individual from two different views or lightings of that person if they don't already know them, suggesting important limitations on our face processing system. Um, every bit of evidence I pre presented showed yet further evidence that the face recognition system is different in the brain, brain from the object recognition system. Different neural structures are involved. That's why you can get different ERP and MEG responses, different functional MRI responses, and doubled associations in the patient literature. Um, that's very nice. As I, as I said, I think in the first class, the methods in human cognitive neuroscience are great for saying this system is different from that system. Okay, that's good. It's worth knowing, but it's kind of rudimentary. We really want to know more about how the face recognition system works. And so far we have a few little clues, but it's, it's sort of weak. Okay, there are other ways of using the methods I've talked about so far functional MRI, MEG, et cetera, that can tell us a bit more about um, the precise representations that are extracted. Um, they're a little bit mathy and complicated, and I couldn't figure out how to cram them into this lecture without driving you guys crazy, so we will get to it soon, probably the next lecture. Okay. Um, are there different parts of the system? Well, we've already seen two, the occipital face area and the fusiform face area. There are quite a few others, and there's more to the story we'll get to later. And you can see how these methods could reveal that. I've often zoomed in on one little region or one little response, but that doesn't mean there aren't lots of other ERPs or lots of other blobs in functional MRI studies. And those are put us in a position to unpack the system and see not just is the face system different from the rest of the brain, but what are the internal components of the face system or the stages of processing in face, face perception. And of course, a full account uh, of face recognition in humans would be a whole, would be like the code, right? What are the series of computations that are going on? And I'd give the field a kind of a, you know, B minus at best uh, in that so far. Um, and um, part of the problem is that all of these, we have hints about the representation, but all of these methods are kind of impoverished. Uh, they provide clues, but they don't really nail what is represented and what is computed when and how.